All right, everyone. So I'm out here today at Bowery Creek, which is a small stream in the mount mountains outside of Southern Utah University's campus. Today, I want to talk a little bit about stream flow measurement and sediment transport measurements and some of the tools we use in the field. And so I've set up a cross section here at Bowery Creek where we'll go across and we'll measure the flow discharge. And you'll work with some of this data in class. And so when we think about measuring the discharge of the river, we need two important pieces of information. We need to know the area of the stream flow, something like square meters, and we need to know the velocity of the flow, something like meters per second. That gives us cubic meters per second or a discharge. So I'll sketch that out quickly, because one of the challenges is the fact that the river flow isn't uniform, it's changing across the river. So what we do, we think about our river channel cross section here, and we've got our measurements set up, and say we'll draw in the surface of the water flow here that you can see. We're basically gonna divide the channel into segments. So I'm gonna draw those out right now. Segments of different areas. And in the middle of each one of those segments, we take a velocity measurement. So we measure the flow velocity at that segment and we apply that velocity to the area surrounding that measurement. And we do that all the way across the channel, measuring velocity. As we're measuring the velocity, we measure the depth of flow in each location, right? We've also got our tape measure across the channel. So we know the width in each segment. And from those three components, the width, the depth, and the velocity, we get our measurement of discharge, Q, equals area times velocity. And we add those all the way up across the channel. Okay, that's what we do. We break it into maybe 10 or 20 verticals where we measure the stream flow. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, one of the other important things we have to consider is where do we measure the flow velocity in the depth of the flow itself? Do I measure the surface? Do I measure right at the bed of the river? But well, we have to know how the flow changes with depth in a river. So I'm gonna draw that out now. What I've drawn here is essentially the bed of the river and the water surface and a depiction of the stream flow velocity. It's actually zero at the bed. The water is stuck to the bed of the river, something called a no-slip condition. And the velocity increases as you go toward the surface. Turns out the average velocity is about four tenths of the way up from the bottom. So that's where we measure the average velocity in each one of our sections. Now the other thing we often want to know at a river channel is how much sediment is moving through the system. And so when we think about what rivers do, they do two main things. They move water and they move sediment. The movement of sediment is also really important to how the river shapes itself. When we think about sediment, it's also moving along the river on the bed as bed load and up in the water column as suspended load. So as we're out making discharge measurements of the flow velocity, if we make corresponding measurements of the bed load and suspended load transport, that can give us an idea of the amount of sediment that's being eroded out of the watershed over time. And so I'll next show you some of the instruments we use to measure the flow velocity, as well as to measure bed load and suspended load. And you'll be using some of that data coming up. All right, folks. So. Here we are with an instrument to measure the velocity of the river. This is known as a current meter. And down here you can see the actual current meter itself. It spins around just like a anemometer would in the wind. It's attached to something called a weighting rod, which ends up being really important to this measurement. And then essentially every time this thing spins, there's a couple magnets in there that send a pulse 
up to the top of the, the rod and to this counter right here. And so essentially what we do is we time the number of revolutions in a certain amount of time and we're able to convert that then to a velocity of the river. I'm going to step a little closer here and show you a couple important things. One, you can just see the current meter itself. So again, the cups here spin around and the rate of that spin is related to the velocity of the river. Here we can see the connection wire signal going up to the instrument reader gives us a reading of the count and the velocity and the number of revolutions as we make the measurement. Now there's another important aspect of this weighting rod is which it's also helping us measure the depth. It might be hard to see, but there are little increments all along this rod here. And you can also see that I can change the location of the current meter in its length along the rod. Because remember, I'm gonna to wanna to set this meter at four tenths of the flow depth up from the bottom of the river. And so this weighting rod is actually set up to do that automatically. And so we're able to actually read the flow depth off of the rod itself. So we drop this into the channel, say the flow right here was at these three marks, that indicates 50 centimeters. I'd come up to the top of the rod and there's some numbers on here as well, zero through 10, and then incrementing up from zero to 10 on this bar. In this case, I'd line up the five with the zero for 50 centimeters, and it automatically sets the current meter, there's a pygmy type current meter, at 20 centimeters, right? 20 centimeters is four tenths of the way up of a flow that's 50 centimeters deep. So then we know our depth of the section, our meter is set at the right place to measure the average velocity, we measure the revolutions in a given amount of time, usually at least 40 seconds, and we then convert that to our actual stream flow velocity and can calculate our discharge. All right, I'm gonna step out of frame here and grab a couple other instruments. And these are gonna be some sediment samplers. I'll start here with this suspended sediment sampler. So this is a sampler that actually measures the sediment suspended in the flow. And basically what we have is a jar and a little instrument with a nozzle on the end. And a simple, simple instrument, you simply dip it down into the water column. There's a little vent right here, so as water fills the bottle, the air can escape. This nozzle accepts the water proportional to its flow velocity. So it's known as an isokinetic sampler, meaning the flow is equal to the ambient flow of the stream. You drop it down into the river bottom and back up at a constant rate and you sample the water itself, right? Take it back to the lab, process for the amount of sediment in the water. Typically we express that as a uh, sediment concentration, amount of sediment per water volume. We're not gonna be working with that type of data in this particular exercise, but we will be using some bed load data. This is a bed load sampler. Very simple. Basically, set this on the stream bed, collect sediment that rolls into the sampler, set it down there for a given amount of time. If you know the size of the opening, you know the volume or the uh, width of channel that you're sampling. Again, with both these instruments, multiple samples across the channel and we can basically use those measurements of the flux of sediment that we measure um, using these samplers and correlate it to the discharge of the river to come up with estimates of the volumes of sediment coming down through the river through time. All right, I'm gonna hop in the stream and show you a couple examples of taking some of these measurements in the channel itself. All right. I'm here in the creek now, making measurements of flow velocity to calculate discharge. Now when we set up our cross section, we always set it up so the left edge is considered left when you're looking downstream. So the river is flowing from upstream, downstream here, that's the left, left side, that's the right side. And so I'd go along, I'd start on the left, 
I'd note the edge of water, about 1.2 meters. I'd start making measurements every 10 or 20 centimeters across the channel here. I'm gonna make an example measurement here where it's a little deeper, closer to the right edge. So I'm over here at about 3.2 meters on the tape. We'll be noting this all in our field books. Looks like the flow depth is about 25 centimeters right here. So I'm gonna set up pygmy the correct height. revolution occurs as the meter is counting. I've set to measure for 40 seconds and again that's partially because the velocity isn't constant. It's fluctuating due to turbulence. You can actually hear that in the difference in the beep spacing. Of course this whole time I'd be noting all of this in my field book again. The distance, the depth recorded here, and the velocity that we're measuring now. And of course I'm oriented so that the flow is coming toward me so that I'm not in the way of the flow altering it, right? The current meter is directed upstream toward the flow and thus it's getting the flow relatively unimpeded. Now the measurement finished before I pulled it out there, so we'll walk over and see what we got. So what we can see on the readout is that in we got 64 counts in 40.3 seconds. And so that's what the bottom number is showing us right now. We hit this button, it actually calculates the velocity. Here we get 0 0.474 meters per second. So we got our width on the tape, we got the depth where we measured the velocity, we got our velocity right here. Go home, calculate discharge, easy as that. All right. Out here with the bed load sampler, same kind of idea as with the velocity measurement. Want to go at sort of even increments. Depending on the flow of the river, you're going to alter how long you sample for. A really low flow like this, there's probably not even any bed load really moving. Right? You need a certain flow to even get that sediment to move. So if not much is moving, you sample a long time. If a lot's moving, you can sample a shorter amount of time. Right? The more sediment you collect, the more accurate your measurement will be. So simply, just like the velocity measurement, get behind the sampler, set it on the stream bed as flush as you can. You'd start timing, right? Something a minute, five minutes, potentially. In theory, if there's bed load, it's moving into the sampler, pick it up, move to the next measurement location. Sometimes you have to empty the bag more often if you're getting a lot of sediment. So again, we'd go at least five or 10 places across the stream channel. Hardest part here is getting the, the sampler flush on the bed without scooping sediment into it. Um, and then you simply collect it out of this bag, right? Take it back to the lab, weigh it, that gives you a mass, and correlate that to the discharge, and you can calculate sediment loads, bed load sediment yields for your watershed. All right, I'm out here with the suspended sediment sampler now. It's a little bit of an art to this suspended sediment sampling. Um, you kind of want to take a big enough sample that you fill up most of the bottle, but you don't want to overfill and you don't want to underfill. And so sort of the rate at which you drop the sampler down and back up through the water column depends on the flow discharge of the river, the velocity. So again, with all these sampling techniques, you're often going to be wanting to make that dis discharge measurement along with your physical samples of sediment. I'll just show you an example here. Come over where it's a little bit deeper. We take some information on the actual depth. All right, we'd have our velocity measurement we just take. That would give us an idea of the rate at which to sample. We'll try this out. And there we have it. Just like that. So again, kind of an art to it. 
Not much sediment in the water right now. It's pretty clear, the flow is pretty low, and there's a reservoir upstream. See a little bit of organic material, but not much there. If we came out here in a big flood, um, we might see much higher sediment loads. But it's important to get all ranges of flows so you can get a good understanding of the processes in your water channel.